Hi, this is Manos Berlakis from the Minneapolis Heart Institute, presenting case number one for the second edition of the Manual of CTO Interventions. This is the case of a balloon uncrossable occlusion. The patient was an 89-year-old diabetic man who presented with stable angina in dyspnea on exertion. He had a known moderate aortic stenosis and was found to have single vessel disease with an occlusion of the right coronary artery. He was therefore referred to our center for PCI of the RCA. Diagnostic and geography actually appeared to have a channel, so it did not appear to actually be a CTO. The vessel was heavily calcified, but there was appeared to be a channel all the way from the proximal to the distal right coronary artery. There was no significant disease on the left. However, there were some septal collaterals from the LAD to the posterior descending artery. As we expected, the, the lesion was very easily crossed with a pilot 200. However, we could not cross with a coarser microcatheter or any other small balloon. We tried uh, the tornus, both the 2.1 and the 2.6, but we were also unsuccessful. There was a large marginal branch on which we advanced a balloon, doing a side branch anchoring balloon, but still could not advance the microcatheter or balloon past that mid part of the right coronary artery. Therefore, we have a balloon uncrossable lesion for which it's important to have a systematic approach, starting with small balloons and progressing to microcatheters and strategies to increase the guide catheter support, laser or rotablation, and then submitting the techniques in the end. In this particular case, we tried several small, ba small balloons, but none would cross. We tried the grenadoplasty or intentional rupture of the balloon, but also that did not do it. We even tried the 0.9 millimeter laser, which did not do it as well. We tried to switch for a rota roto wire, however, we could not advance the rotablator wire through the occlusion. After several attempts, and since the patient had nice septal collaterals from the LAD, we decided to do a brief attempt for retrograde crossing. We were able to easily advance a wire and microcatheter retrograde from the septal collaterals to the distal right coronary artery. And then the wire went in the subintimal space, so we had to do a re-entry approach in the mid-right coronary artery. There is already some dissection in that space, which actually may be favorable here because it will modify the plaque and help with expansion of the lesion. The wire was um, externalized, and then the right coronary was predilated. There is extensive dissection followed by placement of tracheal looting stents. We did postulate the tracheal looting stents with a non-compliant balloon and uh, we did have some staining around the stent, suggesting a small perforation. However, this resolved after prolonged balloon inflation with a 3 mm balloon. And in the end, we had a nice final result. Although the flow to the distal vessel was limited, there was um, no residual dissection, no perforation, and the patient had an event for recovery. This case shows that in some patients, one may have to exhaust all the list of options and go to the more advanced techniques, such as subintimal techniques, retrograde uh, reverse cart in this particular case, to be able to recanalize a balloon and crossable lesion. This appears to be actually more common when there is true to true lumen crossing, potentially because the wire advanced is advances to areas of calcification. When there is subminimal techniques being used, this may be less common, and as a, as a result, subminimal techniques are actually a treatment strategy for such lesions. Thank you.